So to create our base, we're going to first make a piece that is double thickness chipboard and is 12 by 13. So I've got two strips that are cut, one by 12, and the stiffness is running this, this way. And I have one of my pieces of 12 by 12 here in front of me. And you can see that I've got it oriented so that the uh, bendable side is facing me. So I'm going to take this strip of one inch that I've prepped with some score tape and remove the backing and then line it up with this edge that's facing me. I'll give that a good burnish. What we're doing is when we put this together we're having the the chipboard uh, strengths face different directions to give us an extra solid piece. So I'll give this a burnish. So now I've prepped to add the next piece on. It's the 12, one of the 12 by 12 pieces and I put score tape around the exterior. It probably could have just been half inch. I just happened to have the one inch out and didn't think about it. So I'll remove the backing. And to attach the other piece, I'm just going to use some uh, wet glue in the center. And as you recall, this is my end that I've added the uh, one inch strip on. And this piece is bending in this direction. So when I go to put this piece on, I'll want to make sure it's bending in this direction and goes down that way. So I'll get those to this piece attached. And then finally I'll add the last one inch strip to fill in this gap on this side. Now I'm just going to put this under some weights to dry flat. I've brought the landing right to the edge and then I have the foundation centered this way. Oh, there's just a little bit over an inch on each side. So I don't want my base to be a rectangle. I want to cut off the corners here a little bit. So the first thing I'm going to do is, now that I have it where I want it, is trace around the edge with a pencil. And then I can remove the base. And what I've decided to do is here on the back corners to have the the base shape mimic the wall shape by about two inches. So I'm just, I happen to have a two inch ruler or you can measure out two inches or use whatever distance you prefer. So I'm just drawing those lines here. And then in the front, what I'd like to do is again parallel this line of the base but go up to this corner here. So I'm just taking my wide ruler here and seeing where that is. And on mine it's about an inch and three eighths and a sixteenth. So I'm, I'm just keeping the ruler parallel though and making that line. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Find this corner here. And draw that line. And then I'll cut off these diagonal corners. Um, you'll want to have a sharp blade and take your time because you have to go through two thicknesses of chipboard. Now I want to clean finish this edge and so I prep the edge with 1 8 inch score tape because since I have two thicknesses of medium weight chipboard, they're about a sixteenth of an inch each, so I have an eighth of an inch thickness here. And then I've got uh, four strips of uh, pattern paper prepped here. I cut these seven eighths of an inch wide, scored it three eighths and then a half to make a little eighth inch channel there in the center. And then I'm going to start on the front and center my strip here in the front 
so that I have a nice uh, view right there on that edge and then I'll just continue around uh, the edge you know by attaching first to the edge and then wrapping to the top and bottom uh, with notches like we've done before. So for the rocks you could uh, actually use real rocks or pebbles. I wanted to keep my project weight down and also I didn't have any little pebbles but I had a bunch of these little acrylic um, I think they call them acrylic ice cubes. You can see how big they are if I put them out here on my my mat. I just bought them online and of course when they're in this fashion they don't look much like rocks so I have this paint called Americana Decor Chalky Finish and the color that this is is timeless and I just I used two coats of it on these. What I did was I, I emptied out my trash bowl and I put a layer of, of the plastic rocks in here and then I, this is pretty thick paint but I don't need to water it down. I just poured a couple of glops of it on there and just shook it around until they got, I didn't see hardly any edges. Uh, laid them out on some sheets of wax paper to dry. I did encourage them on a little bit with a heat gun. And then after that first layer was completely dry, I could still see some edges. So I thought, well, I'll just do another uh, layer. And I did about three cups of these rocks. And I still have about half a jar of this uh, eight, eight ounces of paint. And... Uh, you need some kind of paint that it will stick to acrylic and also that has this um, this kind of a finish so it will look like rocks. So anyway, that's what I did for my rocks. So depending on the color of your rocks, you may uh, wish to paint or paper this part of the base that may peek through the rocks depending on how heavily you put them down. Mine is, uh, I think, the right color for shadows in the rocks, so I'm going to leave it alone. And then we'll need to glue our base. You can use those lines we drew earlier and make sure it lines up here on the front. Glue that down. Let it thoroughly dry. And then come in with our rocks and glue them however you m many you want to have around all of the sides of the base. And you can pile them up, etc. around the, the whole perimeter, of course. And that will finish the rock base.